Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. You guys might have noticed that I took a couple of days off from posting videos. That is very, very rare over here, but generally things slow way down on YouTube in January, so I'm taking a bit of time off on the main channel. However, I've continued to post with the help of Charlie over on X2, and we are still live streaming almost every day. Tonight, we'll be starting a brand new Empire at War Thrawn's Revenge series, playing as the New Republic, which is really relevant to today's video and should be a lot of fun so we'll link to that channel down below. Anyway, I've got this question a few times lately, so I thought it'd be fun to look at the New Republic's history of ganking Star Destroyers from the Empire, because in both canon and legends, after Endor specifically, the Empire lost several SSDs and other dreadnoughts to the New Republic. Legends specifically see some of them actually thrown back into use, so we'll talk about all of that today. Before we get to Legends though, let's do a brief breakdown of canon, because things are very, very simple. All of the information we have regarding the Empire's post-Endor Super Star Destroyers actually comes from the Aftermath series. In those books, there's a lot of attention paid to the Empire's fleet numbers, and we learn in Life Dent that the New Republic actually has their hands on, at that point, at least three Super Star Destroyers, two of which were willingly surrendered by their Imperial captains, and the third being captured over Kuat as it was undergoing repairs. The New Republic was actually incredibly productive during during this time period because aside from the three captured Super Star Destroyers, they did manage to destroy five others, which is very, very impressive. There's also another ship, the Annihilator, which was not captured by the Alliance, but rather by pirates and was renamed the Liberty's Misrule. So despite these ships being captured on the Rebel side, we don't really learn about how they were used by the New Republic. Presumably at some point, they had enough staff to at least man them, but it's also possible that they were decommissioned, used for mobile or immobile bases, perhaps taken apart for other ships like the Starhawk project. Who knows? I mean, perhaps there is some sort of reason why as the New Republic, you wouldn't want to use one of the Empire's most powerful and terrifying tools as you're trying to win the hearts and minds of the galaxy. All right, so that's canon. As I said, pretty short. Let's now turn to Star Wars Legends, where the New Republic has not only captured several dreadnought-sized ships, but actually produced several of their own, most notably the Viscount line. Now, the Viscount isn't a Super Star Destroyer per se, but it is a Super Star Destroyer analog. The Bounty in Krakana and perhaps other Viscount Star Dreadnoughts were 19 kilometers long and were among the deadliest ships in Star Wars history. There were also other Star Defenders and very large ships created by the New Republic, although we know next to nothing about them. One example would be the Strident class Star Defender. Then, during the Second Galactic Civil War, Corellia also made their own Dreadnought not, though we know very, very few details about that ship. Let's instead, though, focus on Super Star Destroyers specifically, because there were quite a few notable ships used by the New Republic, the foremost of which was the Lusankia. Lusankia was the sister ship to the Executor, the original SSD. The name Lusankia for a long time drew fear into the hearts of New Republic soldiers because it was known as one of the Empire's most severe prisons and reconditioning centers. People would go to the Lusankia and they would come back as brainwashed Imperial sleeper agents. In the X-Wing series, after the New Republic has taken Coruscant from the Empire, it's revealed that the Lusankia is actually an Executor-class Super Star Destroyer. How is it revealed? Well, the Lusankia bursts through the planet's surface, pounds its way through the planetary shield, and jumps off to hyperspace, ferrying Izani Isard. However, by the end of the Back to War, the New Republic would capture the Lusankia, and it would formally enter service. The Lusankia would just sit for a while, but but in 12 ABY would return to active military service as a part of the New Republic's Orinda campaign against the Imperial Remnants. However, the ship would play an even more important role during the Yuzhan Vong War, as it was one of the main assets used aggressively against the Vong. And at the Battle of Borlias, Lucy was used to ram and thus destroy a Yuzhan Vong world ship as a part of Operation Emperor's Spear. Another captured New Republic Super Star Destroyer was the Guardian. The Guardian Guardian, which was heavily damaged shortly after the Battle of Endor, spent a lot of time in repair before eventually being surrendered to the New Republic. The New Republic immediately refitted the Guardian and added it to its fleets, where it would serve under the command of Admiral Akbar during the very late stages of the Galactic Civil War, shortly before the signing of the Pelion Gaverson Treaty. The Pelion Gaverson Treaty actually officially ended hostilities between the New Republic and the Empire, and despite some early difficulties, they would be 
be driven even closer together by the Yuzhan Vong War. By the Second Galactic Civil War, in fact, the New Republic had transitioned into the Galactic Alliance, which was made up of not only the New Republic, but also the largest Imperial Remnant faction, just the Imperial Remnant at that point. So we actually see Super Star Destroyers make their way into New Republic, well, technically GA service, without having been captured. The best example of this would be the Megador. The Megador and another Super Star Destroyer, the Dominion, which we'll discuss in just a second, were both discovered in the deep core shipyards of the Galactic Empire. During the Swarm War, Imperial Supreme Commander Gilad Pelion was pushed into service on behalf of the Galactic Alliance, and he brought the Megador as his flagship. We don't know exactly what type of Star Destroyer the Megador was, or what type of Super Star Destroyer that is, but by all accounts it does seem fairly similar to a standard executor. Later, the Megador would fall under the command of Jason Solo, or Darth Kydus, as he participated in the Second Galactic Civil War. So I mentioned alongside the Megador, the Empire also found the Dominion. We don't know much of that ship's history other than the fact that it participated in some of those late Imperial campaigns that the Guardian fought in, and like the Megador, was ultimately unsuccessful there, and that it remained in the command of the Imperial Remnant, including the Remnant when it was being manipulated and controlled by Jason Solo. It's very possible that the Dominion could have been used as well during the Yuzhan Vong War under a joint GA task force. It was probably at some major battles there, and although not technically a New Republic Super Star Destroyer, because of how the GA was structured, it can almost be considered one just like the Megador. And there are probably other Super Star Destroyers that could fall under this designation. I doubt the Imperial Remnant was down to two. They may have even built more after they were settled and at peace with the New Republic, but these are certainly the two we know about the most, but they're not nearly as famous as the Guardian and, in particular, the Lusankia. But guys, that's all I have for today. Until next time, have a great one, be safe, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. May the Force be with you.